This is 101 on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. My name is Elsie Godwin. One of the sectors largely affected by the lockdown due to the pandemic, among many other sectors, is the entertainment industry. A more reliable way of earning a living as an entertainer in this part of the world arguably depends largely on performing at weddings, birthdays, events, um, cinemas and other kinds of gathering, whether formal, informal or tailored specifically for the said artist. However, all these forms of gatherings have been placed on outright ban. Joining us virtually to discuss the impact of the pandemic on the entertainment industry and the possibility now and post-COVID-19 is a record producer, singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and the founder of Maven's Record, Michael Collins Adjeri, popularly known as Don Jazzy. Hello, Don Jazzy. Hello, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I am great. Um, try to keep body and soul together. Thank you for having me on. Okay, so as a key player in the industry, how would you say COVID-19 has affected the music business in Nigeria? Um, I, 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 it's not that Nigeria, I think it has affected the, a, a lot of businesses across um, around the world. For Nigeria, like you accurately said, it's a country where most of the, the end is, is from live shows and the, the streaming culture is not has not really grown to its full capacity yet in in Africa in general Nigeria mostly and um, so this is this is a problem for um, most of us that uh, we make our money solely from performances um, weddings uh, birthday parties Nigeria is, a, is like party culture place uh, so it's it's really terrible. But some of us are trying our best to, to see how we can, you know, survive in, in, in these times like the rest of the world, really. So, of course, there are loopholes everywhere, and this pandemic is um, showing those loopholes, exposing them. So, in your opinion, what are the loopholes in the music business that the pandemic has um, um, exposed? Um, it, it has basically made it clearer to to entertainers or to the music industry per se to to look for ways that we can actually make other forms of um, uh, revenue uh, possible in the in in the country nobody thought that this kind of thing can happen so a lot of people are not prepared um, so it has basically made us to go back to our drawing board to start looking at ways that we can all make um, a living, um, even uh, even from now up, uh, after the, the whole lockdown situation. Um, pretty much, I don't know, it, it's, 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 it's been a crazy period um, for everybody. But I, I'm sure if, if people are coming up with ideas that we could um, work on to help after the pandemic, the whole thing dies down because it's not it's not just this lockdown period. It's really going to affect a lot of things even after because the economy is not the same. Companies have been affected everywhere. So we have to just put on our thinking cap and work on some um, ways to survive. Okay, so we've seen a level of interest from the government regarding the entertainment industry. Um, very recent is the appointment of few key industry players into a COVID-19 committee for advisory roles on ways to mitigate the effect of um, the pandemic. Now, looking back holistically, do you think the music side of the industry has been given due attention? No, not at all. Mm. Um, not, even, not even close. We've been complaining for a long time, but um, nah, they haven't really paid us attention at all. Um, a, a lot of us built the businesses that we built from scratch without any help from the government or even the, the um, corporate sector um, at all, without any help whatsoever. Um, it's not like banks even trust what we can achieve uh, and stuff like that. So we basically started from scratch and built this thing without anybody's help. Um, I, I do hope that now with all the with the so-called attention or so-called um, um, 
attention that are trying to, they're claiming that they're giving. Now, I do hope that it does translate to something. <laughs> uh, sometimes I hear of all these, uh, all these promises and things that they, they make. Uh, it doesn't really translate to anything. So I, I do hope that that's going to take us serious this time around. I, I heard about the committee that they set up, um, and we're looking for the best. Mm. But in the past, so now, they, they haven't really been as forthcoming. <laughs> Okay, looking at um, it from the past, like you said, um, the film industry, I think they've gotten a bit of attention, but we've not seen that in the music industry. Why do you think that is so? I, 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 I don't know what my I don't know what is postulate per se. Um, the, I, I don't think that, they believe that most of that are in the music industry are uh, not business minded. Um, some of them don't really. I, I think maybe because they don't see the um, the the ways they, they think they feel like we're not structured enough to see how this money has been made. Maybe because of some of the entertainers um, that haven't really built like a structure or like record labels that haven't really built, built like a structure around how. They make money in general, so they understand more of the oh, we, we shoot a movie, we we we, we the cinema the industry is growing now. Um, you can get how many people come to the cinema to watch your movie. They understand how that works. They don't really understand how the music side works. So I, I think that's why they have been more focused on the Nollywood side. And besides, Nollywood started thriving way before the music industry per se. Uh, so I think that's why they give more attention to the to the um, the film industry or maybe because of their their um, what they call this the organizations that they have. Mm -hmm. So do you think uh, that will be changing anytime soon? Um we don't really have solid organizations that we trust in the music industry. So most of us don't really pay attention to a P man per se, or all the other uh, associations that we have. So I think the, the movie people have pretty much have like a more uh, a stronger body that they come together. I think with their collective voices, they have been able to work better with the government. But hopefully, in the music sector, we'll put together something to see how that. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about you and the talents you have groomed, um, worked with, and the ones you are currently mentoring. What do you look out for in talents? Um, talents. I look out for talents. <laughs> I look out for talents in talents. <laughs> and um, I, I, I pretty much like people that my spirit connects with them, you know. Um, obviously, talent is, is very key. Um, I try as much as possible not to get the same type of artist in record label. I, I, I look for like diverse people that have like diverse talent. A Johnny Drew different from a Ladipo, for instance. A Ladipo is different from the creative. Uh, the music that they make is different. That's what I'm saying. Um, so, yeah, pretty much mm. that. People have recognized the diversity of sounds that come out of Mavens, like you just said. Um, so how have okay. you been able to maintain the individualities of these artists? Um, I don't know. It's just this, the, same way that you, the same way that you get along with one is how you get along with the next um, person. People pretty much, if, if you find artists that pretty much understand their vision and what they want to achieve, um, it is easy. It is easy getting along with these artists to nurture that set, to nurture that talent, and help them work towards the vision that they already have in their head. Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, finally, before I let you go, you are now classified as one of the strongest influencers in Nigeria, at least in the social media space. Now, um, we can say most celebrities can be classified as one on based on numbers uh, of followings, but there seems to be a deliberate attempt from you to keep your engagement at par. 
Now you have worked with various brands. Re recently is your collaboration with V Bank. Tell us about that side of your hustle. Now that side of my hustle. Mm -hmm. Um, I I I pretty much try as much as possible to put a hundred on anything that I, I'm I'm doing. Um, I feel I feel like okay. I obviously have some form of influence, and if a brand approaches me to to you know partner with them uh, um, towards achieving their their goals, I try as much as possible to understand the the, the brand um, and where they're headed, where they're headed, and you know do everything possible in my power to help all of us achieve our goals. Really, um, it is. I, I I believe that if almost every um, uh, celebrity or uh, artist producer should also have that mindset, and um, you know, put put in effort in 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 trying to utilize their influence to you know to the best of their their power. Mm. Yeah. So do you agree that your influencer marketing hustle, like I called it, is a deliberate attempt from you? This is the influencer marketing hustle. Uh. You see, I think I've pretty much been the same way <laughs> that I've been from I've had different brands that I've worked with from time from MTN to Samsung to Lawyer Milk to Indomie to you know, to uh, uh, what they call it. I had a great brand uh, before uh, Johnny Walker. So I, I pretty much, I, I take it as a hustle, like my production hustle, I take it as my music, making, music mis, making hustle um, as well. Mm. Okay, um, we'll keep watching and um, following your hustle as they grow. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank right. you very much. Okay. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, we'll be joined by a Nigerian creative industries entrepreneur.